In this video, we'll run a cross-tabulation using the Youth Cohort Study of England and Wales 2004-2007 Cohort 12 dataset. This dataset is available for free download from the UK Data Service website. Let's say you want to examine the relationship between two categorical variables, such as gender and income level, or location and home ownership. You can use a cross-tabulation, and then eventually a chi-square test, to determine whether or not there is a significant relationship between the two categorical variables you are interested in. Cross-tabulation allows you to summarize the data in categorical variables and examine it to determine if there are any relationships present. SPSS provides cross-tabulation charts that show you how many individuals or cases are present in each group. For example, if you ran a cross-tabulation on gender and income bracket, with gender having two categories, female and male, an income level having five categories, very high, high, average, low, and very low, you would be able to see, for example, how many women have high incomes and how many men have average incomes. For our cross-tabulation, we will consider the following research question. Is there a relationship between a student's history of truancy in year 11 and his or her enrollment in full-time education after secondary school? We will use S2Q10 as one of our categorical variables as it concerns the educational enrollment status of each student after secondary school. Because we are interested in illuminating the relationship between enrollment in full-time education and previous truancy, the second categorical variable we'll use is S1 Truin, which details the truancy behaviors of students in year 11. To perform the cross-tabs, go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Cross-tabs. In the cross-tabs dialog box that opens, We'll need to find both of our categorical variables in the variable list on the left. First, let's look for S2Q10 and move it to the rows text box, and then S1 Truin and move it to the columns text box. Next, we're going to select the cells button on the upper right, and under the percentage header, we're going to click row. This tells SPSS to calculate the percentages in each row of our cross-tabulation table. Under the Counts header, select Observed and Expected Counts. You'll see why we've done this in a moment. Now click Continue and OK. The SPSS output window should open, and in this output window you should have a large cross-tabulations table. You can see in the output table that SPSS has displayed for us the total counts and percentages for each cell. Looking at the yes row at the top of the table, which includes all those survey participants who said yes, they were enrolled in full-time education at a school or college, we can see that a total of 7,886 answered yes. In this yes row, we can also see that the truancy histories of students enrolled in full-time education have been calculated for us. For example, 49 of the 7,886 students enrolled in full-time education after secondary school reported persistent truancy during year 11. Now, why have we calculated both the actual observed counts and the expected counts for each cell? The difference between the observed counts and the expected counts for each cell lets us know that there is some relationship between these two variables. If there wasn't, the totals in each cell would be the same. However, we don't yet know if this difference is statistically significant. We can determine if there is a statistically significant relationship between these two categorical variables by running a chi-squared test. 